morning, ladies and gentlemen. I think we have sat for too long. Maybe can we stand for just a minute? And I know many of my very senior colleagues like myself will appreciate this. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please sit down. I don't know where to start from. Uh, Presido has uh, done the job for me, so uh, maybe I've got to just say, instead of doing all protocol observed, I'll also say all speeches observed. <laughs> Then I can take my bow. But um, despite the, the inclination not to say anything, and to probably just stand on standing, not protocol, standing speech of uh, Presido to take a bow, but uh, I would still like to, to appreciate this gathering. Uh, Mr. President of the, of, of the Council, Ajibola Ajibanji, my younger brother, the President-elect Alex, my colleague and my friend, uh, our BOT chairman and my boss, uh, Chief Chamberlain Oibo, the CEO of NNPC present here, my colleagues, a very senior management staff of NNPC present here, MDs of our partnership of all sorts, from producing companies to service companies, other captains of industry, distinguished speakers, delegates, uh, gentlemen of the press, or ladies, I think they just said gentlemen applies to all of them. And, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know it's a very big privilege to stand here before this very, very obviously profoundly important uh, gathering. And being a member of NAPIA since 1991, and I think I'm qualified to be called a ranking member. And, and knowing the caliber of people that are in this hall and in the membership of this association, I know that it's a very big privilege to stand before you, not just as the group managing director of NMPC, but as a very, very ranking member of this association to address you. And I'm, I completely recognize the privilege given to me. Secondly, as the, the leader of the National Oil Company, we have a much, much wider role to play in this. And therefore, on behalf of the NNPC family, which I lead you know, by God's grace and by the wisdom of Mr. President, I would like to thank all of us for attending and gracing this, uh, this occasion. Let me not take too much of your time. And that one thing is very obvious. Jeff, I can see that uh, uh, I have your concern, and I share your concern. That is, uh, we know clearly there is declining investment in the exploration in, in our industry today. It's very obvious. You know, in the last 10 years, not much has gone into exploration. We all know this. We're all professional leaders of the, of the industry, and, and the reasons are very clear. Two reasons. One is there's some level of clarity that is required in the fiscal terrain of our industry, which is not there. We know that there are attempts to put in place the appropriate uh, petroleum legisl legislation in place since 1999 till date, we are unable to deliver on that. And that means to an investor that what would be the basis of my investment? Can I get back my money? Would I recover my, my cost? And also, what margin am I going to bear? What stability do I have around the margins that I'm going to bear from this business? And of course, that automatically means that you maintain status quo. Exploration means you know, banking on hope that will find oil and produce them and make money from it. If you are not sure you're not going to make money from it, you know, the likelihood is that you, you back out of it. So I can understand that one reason why exploration and investment are low is because of this fiscal clarity. The second reason is, uh, apart from the, the spike in crude oil prices that we had in 2013 or thereabout, uh, we know that the crude oil prices are not at the levels that we all want it to be. Every one of us here wants to see high crude oil prices, of course not excessively high, because that can bring pain to everybody, but obviously not at the levels that we see today. Everybody would like to see a plus 70 crude oil price, but we are not there. And the averages for this year is definitely below $70 to the barrel. And when you have that options, the chances are that you put most of your money in facilities that can bring production on the table quickly for you and not to put it into exploration. 
And probably the third and the, the other reason that I can see why there is a lull in exploration activities as indeed just apathy in the industry, competition from other sources. The optics around renewables have made it very difficult for oil companies to, to look more deeply with, on exploration activities. And I'm sure there are some jurisdictions today that are considering banning exploration activities in oil and gas for oil. And that, of course, you know, affects our mood and our decisions to, to go into exploration activities. For that reason, we have a, a situation we are unable to increase our reserves from the level that we know. We have been counting 37, and that 37 has remained as 37. It means that we are just making marginal additions of reserve. And ultimately, what we will see is a massive depletion in the, in the available resources. Our target is to hit 40 billion barrels but, uh, of reserve. But unless we go back to exploration, we can't achieve that because the, uh, the, the production is ongoing. The additions are not matching the production. And therefore, what you will ultimately see in the short term is probably a you know, decline in the reserves that, that we have. And therefore, for the industry, and knowing the future of oil, with all the uh, assumptions that are in place, everybody believes that by year 2040, 2050, oil will become insignificant. I don't believe that, by the way, uh, because uh, all the best of estimates has shown that there could still be oil consumption in the region of 100 million barrels per day, you know, globally, so even by 2040. It means there are, there's a situation where increasing population, increasing needs will ensure that this current level of uh, consumption or production will still remain valid by 2040. Therefore, it will be still produce 100 million barrels of oil per day by year 2040. It means that oil will still remain relevant. Of course, the competition from renewables, the urge to go to renewables is very obvious, it's real, but it's nowhere near replacement of the fossil fuel in the, in the, short, in the near future, which means that there's a situation that we can take advantage of. We need to produce oil very quickly that, now that we can make use of it. As we are all aware, there are new finds in the wrong locations. There are new sources of oil. The shale oil is growing, and this is real. And there are also finds in locations that we never expected, in volumes that we never anticipated. This is adding to the available oil resources across the globe, and it's going to compete with the production that is going to come from our country. And until we quickly go back to exploration, add these results, produce more, so that by 2023, which is our target, to hit the 3 million barrels per day production, that will not be in position to take advantage of that you know, a huge situation that, that requires us to go back to exploration very, very quickly and massively. And of course, that will also rely on the membership of this association. Uh, apart from the business leaders who will make the commercial decision to go into exploration, you do need the membership of this association, the skills, the knowledge, and the will to go back to exploration. And I believe that with the new changing technologies, the new way of doing things, Innovations that are coming that sometimes we can't even tell what happens tomorrow, as we all know. Uh, what big data does and how the big data is mined and so on and so forth that happens on routine basis, on daily basis that we have no control of. We have no way of knowing what, where tomorrow will be. It's such that you know, the skills in this industry, particularly for our membership, must be completely and quickly upgraded so that we can take advantage of this new situation. And as we worry about exploration not being uh, uh, highlighted in our country, we're also proud as a national oil company that we found oil, Bajibola said, we found oil in the Cretaceous. As my boss is aware, uh, Mr. Chamberlain, our boss, that we have not made enough effort to find oil in the Cretaceous. We have drilled 23 wells, 23 nearly dry wells in the Chad Basin. And our partners have drilled some wells in the Benio Trove. And there are some marginal finds. But today I can confirm to you that we made significant finds. <laughs> and that has opened a new frontier for us, for the industries in general because our understanding of the rift system has changed. The play system, our understanding of the play system has changed. 
And therefore, the chances of finding new oil has, is greatly elevated. And that we didn't do from the blues. NMPC deployed the most recent technologies in arriving at this. Your chemical practices and techniques. FTG technologies. Basinal, the most modern way of basinal analysis. And ultimately, and most importantly, I need to highlight this. This was done completely by in-house resources. And we're very proud of this. <laughs> and I'm sure many of uh, my, my senior colleagues and my boss, uh, Mr. Chamberlain Oibo, will confirm, and I'm sure the industry will accept, that many of the major prolific finds that you find today in onshore, in the, in the onshore were actually finds made by NNPC uh, geoscientists. But what we find, we move on, we allow you to produce. <laughs> but we have opened a new program. We are inviting every one of us to join us. You know, the Cretaceous is a big play today. And there are opportunities. And we believe that this is going to change the equation of oil production in this country in the sense that it's cheaper to produce and ultimately as reserve addition because much, much easier when you're looking at the Cretaceous play. Because now that we have an understanding of the Cretaceous play, we think that there will be very rapid exploration activities which will make us to make new finds. And I assure you that uh, we have a rig on site. We are moving from Kolmali River location today. And we'll move to another location. We're going to test another structure, and another structure, and another structure. <laughs> but we don't want to do it alone. Please join us. And I'm inviting the industry to come on board so that we can do more exploration in the frontier basin, which includes the ultra deep water. As we are all aware, the ultra deep water is completely unexplored today. And I'm sure that by close of the year or next year, uh, God willing, I believe that there will be some form of bid round in this country. And when that happens, that will be an opportunity to test the ultra deep water. And of course, we, we cannot achieve any success without collaboration across the industry between partners. We as a national oil company, our partner companies, our joint venture partners, our production sharing partners, and the independents, including our own NPDC, must collaborate you know, widely across the industry. We share data, share information. And indeed, in today's big data world, there's really nothing to hide. And you get more by sharing data and sharing information so that ultimately, the information that is available to the next partner will help you in refining your own opportunities and, of course, ultimately finding more oil and making more money. This industry can't progress unless it keys into the, the new trends. And I like the, 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 the choice of the, the team of this company, which is expanding Nigeria's petroleum landscape through digitization, innovation, and emerging new technology. We can't run away from it. The whole world is a big data world today. It is about, it's a very digital world. Innovation happens every day, every moment, every, mo every second. And of course, new technologies that we never know how it works or where it comes from makes our works more efficient, produce cheaper oil much more quickly. And of course, at the end of the tunnel, to utilize it in the most efficient and most environmentally friendly way. This we have to key in as an industry, and particularly as members of NAFI, so that you know, we, can, we can leverage on the existing technologies to, to, to deliver. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we in the NMPC, we are poised to ensure that this industry progresses. We will support every process that will bring clarity to our fiscal terrain by supporting the passage of the necessary petroleum legislation, I'm sure, uh, people will expect me to comment about the amendment to the Deep Offshore Act. The Deep Offshore Act, uh, you must see NMPC in two perspectives. One, as a, as a company completely owned by government, as a national oil company. And then the second part of it, that we're also players in this terrain. 
as we may all be aware, the amendment to the Deep Offshore Act is not unexpected. As a matter of fact, it is a requirement of law that there should be an amendment to the Deep Offshore Act. We can have issues around what kind of amendment can you do, how far can you go, or what amendment can you really put on the table. But the reality is that as far as 2003, the conditions that are required to make changes to the Deep Offshore Act has, was met, even by 2003. But we didn't do anything. We can't blame anyone. It is opportunity loss. I see that clearly. But the reality is that we, this industry expects something will happen. And that something is very, very needful and useful for the industry because we all worry about clarity of the fiscal terrain in our industry so we can plan. And what we can do as an industry is to join the government to make sure that the overall petroleum legislation is put on the table, which is what Ajibola referred to as the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill and any other name that we call it. But I will prefer to call it the petroleum legislation in a, in a wider scale so that when this clarity is brought on the industry, now we will know the basis of our investment, how we can recover our costs, and what margins that we can work more from business so that people can go back to, to real work. But I also know that despite the passage of the Deep Offshore Act Amendment, sorry, Deep Offshore Amendment, Amendment to Deep Offshore Act, this is a business. There's room for commercial conversation. I do not believe the level of uh, anxiety or worries that the passage of the Deep Offshore Act Amendment has caused. You know, it's really completely, uh, I believe it is unnecessary because there are room for conversation. There are room for engagement so that this business can continue. And I will call on our partners to, to believe this. And we can talk to ourselves. But most importantly, as an industry, we must come together and rally around the government to make sure that we have a cool, full slate of the petroleum legislation so that this country can become the next heaven of, uh, for investment. Even as today, but I believe that despite the passage of the Deep Offshore Act and despite all the concerns that is raised by the industry, investing in this country is the right place to, to do. <laughs> First of all, finding oil, the success rate, we're all, there are many geoscientists here. This is an organization of geology and geoscientists, except in the Cretaceous. The, the chances of finding oil here is higher than anywhere else that I can think of. Yes, there are many places. Not, I'm not talking about the, uh, the other Mideast mid uh, location. But we know that in this industry, that finding oil in Nigeria, uh, Niger Delta in particular, is much, much easier than uh, most places that we, we work in. And secondly, this is the most resilient country that you have to invest. Resilient in the sense that this country has capacity to adjust to situations. And for our oil workers, this is where your capacities are most tested. And for leaders of the industry, this is where your ability to navigate through difficult situations is put to test. And I know that a number of multinational oil company employees who work here end up at the top of their organizations. <laughs> And, and therefore, I will really call on all of us to work together, to we'll collaborate more, so that ultimately, uh, this industry uh, is the best place to be. And we in NMPC, uh, we are poised to ensuring that we support our partners to make sure that they get, they get the best deal in this place, so that the generality of our shareholders, which the Nigerian people, will benefit from the oil and gas industry. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please, one more time, round of applause for our Group Managing Director, Marlon Mele Kiari. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, please. I, I'm, I'm directly asked to see them, please. Uh, I know the, the, the ovation wasn't for me. I cannot take it. Thank you so much. By the way, I didn't ask anyone to stand up. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Okay, very quickly, we want to appreciate some of our members who have distinguished themselves in service.